50, 51. That's, that's the next one after 50. We're having some technical difficulties, and I'll address it on next week. Psalm 51, verse 10. There you find these words recorded. David says to God, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. This morning, if you don't mind, I want to lift up this text from the subject, How to Be a Worship Leader. How to Be a Worship Leader. 2018, God has been really dealing with us at the New Hope Church on this subject of worship. We've dealt with some unique services or some unique messages. What role are you sitting on? This ain't no ordinary worship. Here we are to worship was just last week, the next level, any day now, what's on the menu. And in Bible study, we've been studying fasting. It should ring a bell in your head that if we have been dealing with worship this much, that God must want our worship in a new way. It comes to a glaring situation that maybe God has gotten tired of stale worship, that he's no longer pleased with the status quo of you just coming in here, sitting in here for 45 minutes, and then going home. Maybe God wants something out of us different than what we gave him the last 20 years of our life. Preach up in here, Terrell DeMond. Maybe, just maybe, God is saying to the New Hope Church that, listen, your worship was good for a season, but if you're going to go where I am and not stay where I've been, you got to change your worship. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm, I'm the only one that wants to look in the mirror and deal with the fact that I've been giving God stale worship. I've been giving God leftover worship. I've been giving God not my best worship, but I've been giving God that same ordinary worship that I gave him when all the bills was paid and I was in good health. But is there anybody in here that understands if you want something different, you got to do something different? Maybe, maybe it's just me, but if you want to see what you've never seen, you got to do what you never did. Why? It's amazing that there's a new devil that's attacking us, but we want to go ahead and fight him in an old way. And we got to get in our minds that my worship has to be so real that my Sunday worship this morning is different than what I gave him last week. And so if you don't mind, if you don't mind, every man, everybody got to learn how to become a worship leader. Time out that you just come. Y'all remember in the old school, you used to come to church, and who was the worship leader? It was the deacons. Amen. If they wasn't on it, it wasn't a good service. Pray. Amen. Y'all remember they get up and they sing them songs, and if they didn't stir you up, you wasn't stirred. Amen. If they, if, they didn't, if they didn't move you, you wasn't moved. And then we move from there and we move to this modern day worship where we have a worship leader, a praise and worship leader. And if they don't fire you up, if they don't rile you up, then you don't get riled up. But you go to the basketball game and ain't no worship leader. Uh, but you know when to cheer. Uh, some of y'all was on TV last night at WSU's game. There wasn't one worship leader. Yet all of y'all knew when to stand up. You knew when to open up your mouth. You knew when to clap. You knew when to boo. How is it that we know better out there than we do in here? I mean, I mean, I mean, when you go to the Chiefs game, there ain't no worship leader at the Chiefs game. Hey, man, the cheerleaders only uh, address uh, a, a third or a fourth of the crowd. Three-fourths of the crowd don't even see the cheerleaders. So the cheerleaders can't be the worship leaders. But how is it that the Chiefs and the Shockers get more worship than God? 
Mm, can't say amen, just say ouch. Just how, 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 how is it? How is it? We're about to go in the NCAA tournament, amen, and, and I like it, amen. You know, we get our brackets. Come on, don't, don't, act, don't act churchy on me. You know, you fill your brackets out, you pay your $5 because you want to win the bracket. And then we religiously watch March Madness. <laughs> Some of us got apps on our phone and it updates us scores. And we got our team that we picked. And when our team loses, some of us lose our religion. But when our team wins, we celebrate with our team. Well, let me help you out. It is always March Madness with God, and you are on the winning team. And no matter what comes your way, you are victorious. And you don't need no app for that. In fact, you got a world and a life app that tells you that if God did it yesterday, if God did it last year, God will do it again. So God sent me here to help you learn how to become your own worship leader. Why? Because hell will knock on your door. Uh, hell will ring your doorbell and hell will email you. And if you don't know how to deal with hell, hell will take over your life. And you will find yourself living in hell only to die to go to hell. But you ought to tell the devil, hell ain't made for me. I don't know about y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I wasn't made for hell. And so if hell comes my way, hell got a fight on its hand. And I don't need Fred. I don't need Kristen. I don't need a deacon. And I don't need a preacher to stir up the gift that's on the inside of me. Because when I look at the text, None of them are in the text when it says, stir up the gift which is in yourself. So I got to learn how to become my own, my own worship leader. First of all, if you're going to be your own worship leader, the first thing is you got to learn how to be real with God. Uh, quit going to God, lying to God, talking about God, everything all right when you're about to lose your mind. Quit, quit going to God, talking about everything is cool when you ain't even cool yourself. Learn how to be transparent with God. Why? God is everywhere at the same time. God knows not only what you say, God knows what's in your mind and in your heart. So we got to learn how to be real with God. Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. I mean, we got we to gotta learn how, how to be real with God. Quit, quit trying to be pretty with God and real with Satan. And be real with God and pretty with Satan. You, you got to learn how to let God know what you need, when you need it, and be real enough that God says they really do need it. David says, create in me. <laughs> in other words, he's saying, Lord, I'm dirty. I'm not going to try to make it pretty. I need you to create in me a clean heart because the heart I got right now just ain't. Is there anybody in here that you got to go to God and say, Lord, if you don't shut my mouth up right now, I'm going to cuss everybody out around. Y'all don't want to play. Is there anybody here ever get into a situation that you are about to lose your witness? You got to be real with God and say, God, hold me right now. See, the problem is you act like you don't know yourself. So that's why you keep acting stupid every day. But if you really know you, you know that you are one picnic basket away from being crazy. <laughs> nah, hello, somebody. Is there anybody out there that's close to the edge? Maybe, maybe it's just me. I'm, I'm, I'm so close to the edge, I, I feel imbalanced at times. And I got to tell God, Lord, don't hold me tomorrow. I need your grace today. I need your mercy today. I may not get to the... You got to be real with God if you're going to be a worship leader. Secondly, you got to talk to God. I know all of our pretty music, contemporary music, is all about the worship leader talking to the people. But is there anybody in here that remember old school when you sung not to folk, you sung to God. Lord, 
take my hand, lead me on, and let, is there anybody in here that understands when you get into real worship, it ain't about you, it's about God. And you got to learn how to move to a place that you talk to God more than you talk to See, see here, here's what happened when hell knocks on our door. We start talking directly to hell. Say it again, and I'm going to say this, 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 that, that, and the other. But I need to talk to some real folk that understand when hell knock on my door, that's when I got to look to the hills with cometh my help. All of my help cometh. I got to learn how to talk to him before I talk to you so I don't mess up my witness with you. David, David says, David says, David says, create in me a clean heart. Oh God. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't talking about, he ain't talking to Uriah. He ain't talking to Bathsheba. Now, mind you, he messed up with both of them, but he ain't talking to them because if you're going to be a worship leader, you got to understand there are some folk you just can't talk to. <laughs> <laughs> there are some folk that just won't listen to you. And you got to learn how to turn it over to God and leave it. So you got to talk to God. Thirdly is this. You got to assume the posture of worship. Now we've heard and we've learned and we've taught on the posture of prayer. But there's also a posture of worship. And let me help you out. Sitting there on your do-nothing is not the posture of worship. <laughs> Preach up in here, Terrell. It, 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 it is not the po I, I know you've been doing it for years thinking you're worshiping, but it is not the posture of worship according to the word of God. At no point does God ever say, come pull up a chair and worship me. In fact, in fact, in fact, we were messing around with Sonny this morning, and, and Sonny, you know, I know Sonny has had some health issues, and he, he has some low iron in his blood, and he said, Pastor, I'm cold. And I said, well, you better not sit there and not worship. Uh, and I told Turner, sit here, if you, don't worship if you want to, you might end up dead in the sanctuary. That if you got low iron, the only way to get some stuff moving is your hallelujah better be biblical. And hallelujah is a full body experience. It is not you sitting there looking pretty, talking about hallelujah, Jesus, but hallelujah will make you wave your hands. It'll make you kick up your feet. Hallelujah will make you rock sometimes. Hallelujah will make your body. And so if you're sitting out there with, with, with low iron and you cold, maybe it's because your worship is cold. We are not going to sit in the sanctuary and crank the heat up to 75 because you won't worship. Somebody can't say man, just say ouch. If you cold up in here, it's because you ain't putting nothing in. <laughs> None of y'all went to the, to the WSU game and went to the usher and asked the usher, can you turn the heat up? You don't go to the Chiefs game and ask the people at the Chiefs game, can y'all turn some heat on up in here? But you make sure you dress appropriately. You make sure you stand up appropriately. And in worship, it ought to be the same thing. If your butt go to sleep, it's because you ain't moving it. If your feet's well, maybe you ought to kick them more often. The sanctuary is not a place for dead folk. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. If we were to do this God's way, we wouldn't even bring a dead body in the sanctuary. Now y'all don't want to talk. Go, go back and look at your text. You ain't seen one dead body up in the sanctuary in the text. Why? Because they took the dead body straight to the cemetery. And if there was going to be a service, they'd have it at the cemetery. Why? Because the sanctuary was made for life. <laughs> and you ought to show some life and get some life and show some life. Huh, if you want to go to sleep, stay at home. Amen. 
Hey, man, you, you, they told me that, that the, the Duke uh, North Carolina game, that the tickets was like $2,700. Now, listen, you'd been a fool to pay $2,700 to go to the game and fall asleep. That would have been a wasted investment to pay all that money, to take all that time, just to go there and sleep among thousands of folk. But let me help y'all out. Some of y'all do that every Sunday. You done been through thousands of dollars worth of hell all week long, and you done paid it all week long, only to come into the sanctuary and fall asleep because you don't understand that bread from heaven is coming out, but you ain't even getting none of it, and you're out there malnourished, not because there ain't food on the table, but because you sleep at the table. I'll, I'll never forget, I'll never forget, I was growing up and we were at, uh, at a relative's house and one of my cousins fell asleep at the table. And I was trying to wake him up. And my auntie did like this, she said, no, don't wake him up. We ate dinner. She dismissed everybody from the table. He was still asleep. She took his plate, put everything up. About 10 o'clock at night, he come in and said, I'm hungry. She said, you should have ate. He said, I was tired. She said, I know it, but you should have wanted the food more than you wanted rest. Because rest was going to come eventually. Y'all missed that. You ought to want the bread of heaven more than you want rest. Because rest is going to come eventually. I am too hungry for God to miss the feast that's before me. You got you to gotta assume the posture of worship. The pot, there are seven postures of worship. I'm not going to get all on it today, but let me, I told you, sitting down on your butt ain't one of the postures. One of the first postures of worship is this, bowing down. <laughs> you ought to bow down in God's presence because you realize who he is. Uh, if you go to England, they bow down when the queen comes in, uh, but God is bigger than the queen. And we bow down in worship uh, because we understand we serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, and I bow down because uh, I want to give him the respect that is due. The second posture of worship, and the little fella had it on today, is dancing. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. You, you ought to, you ought to understand that dancing ain't just for the club. <laughs> it blows my mind. It blows my mind for some of y'all to dance all while you was out in the world and to come into God, and now you're too dignified to dance. Now you're too eloquent to dance. But is there anybody in here that understand I dance more in here than I ever did in the world? Because in here I realize the joy of the Lord is my strength. Is there anybody in here that understand when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me? Now, the difference between me dancing here and me dancing in the world is I didn't change my dance partners. In the world, if I wanted to dance with somebody, CJ, I had to walk up to her and say, excuse me, baby, uh, how, how you doing? Uh, my name is Sorrell. What's your name? Amen. Can I get this dance? And if I was good, I asked for this dance and the next dance to let the other fellas know that this was going to be mine by the end of the night. But let me help you out. I don't have to ask for a dance with God because God is my dance partner who is waiting for me to dance. In fact, God says, when you just think about me, something on the inside ought to start moving. And what you're going to find out, you never dance alone with God. There are angels all around you who will dance with you if you learn how to worship and get the posture. David, 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 dance before the Lord. David, dance. He dance before the Lord. David, David, dance before. Not, not one time did it say David was on beat. He just says that he danced 
before the Lord. Not one time did it say that David was popular in his dance or that it was a popular dance that he was doing. The word just says that David danced before the Lord and his wife got mad and said, how are you going to lose your dignity dancing in front of these folk? And David says, I'll become even more undignified than this. In other words, my dance ain't predicated on if it's popular or if it's pretty. My dance is predicated on the posture of worship. The third posture of worship is face down prostrate before the Lord. Have you ever thought about that the God of the universe who made the heavens and the earth, who spoke the world into existence, who made the stars in the sky, the God who made the sun and the moon and made them so that they don't show up at the same time. The same God that made all four seasons, that one will come in while the other is waiting on standby, and then at the right time it comes in at God's time. The same God uh, that'll take the earth and spin it on its axis uh, and put it on rotation uh, around the sun. The same God uh, that can do all of that uh, is still the same God uh, that looks at you every single day of your life. Is there anybody in here that when you think about the awesomeness of God, uh, you want to lay prostrate. I don't, I don't know about y'all, but can we be real? You don't deserve to be here. Let me, let me, let me be real by myself. Maybe I can't talk about you. Maybe you're holy. Maybe let me just give you my own lifestyle. I, I, I don't deserve to be here. I should be dead in my grave for the crazy stuff I done done. I should be in some asylum ward somewhere, not knowing who I am in this world. I ought to be laid up in a hospital somewhere because of the crazy stuff I didn't put in my system. I ought to be totally paralyzed from my forehead all the way down. But is there anybody in here that can realize God's grace made all things not happen in my life. Not because I was good. Not because I kept all of his commandments, but because God's unmerited favor towards me, I'm still here. That ought to make you shout right there. That ought to make you put your head down and you get prostrate before the Lord because you realize you're not worthy to look at him. <laughs> not worthy to be in his presence. Not worthy to call his name. But he loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son to become the door for you. <laughs> that the door is now wide open, that you can come into his presence, even as messed up as you and I are, he's still there on the throne with his arms wide open, begging, begging you, begging you to come. So you got to assume the posture of worship. Finally, I'm going to go home on this one. You have to desire him more than the shame of sin. <sighs> that right there, that point right there messed me up this morning. When God said, Davis, do you desire me more than the shame of sin? I say, Lord, I don't desire the shame of sin. He says, you don't know that you desire the shame of sin. <laughs> and then he sent Sister Alberta to give me confirmation of what he was saying. You don't know that you desire food until you start fasting. Then you realize there's a desire in you that is so subtle that it don't even talk until you no longer feed it. 
Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. And God said, there is a shame of sin that is in your flesh that it is so desirable that you love it. And you got to desire me more than you desire the shame. Some of us have been so engrossed in sin that we don't even know we sin no more. If you're a brother that always hit on women, you don't even know you hit no women. You didn't lie to yourself and say you just flirtatious. You just outgoing. No, you got a demon. Let's call it what it is. And it's a lust demon. And let me help you out. How do you know you got a lust demon? When you hit on anything and everything that walk past you. It's one thing to have a proclivity. It's another thing to have a demon. And a whole lot of us got some demons that we've been calling proclivities. And that's why we can't get delivered from it. Because we can't be honest with God about it. And then we have pretty prayers. Lord, remove my eyesight so that I won't lust no more. And some of y'all forget, Ray Charles couldn't see. Still had a lust demon. Ray said, baby, give me your hands. Felt a wrist. And that was enough to make Ray sin. And so just removing your eyesight without dealing with your demon will just leave you a blind, lustful person. But we got to learn how to go to God and ask God to recreate in us a clean heart and renew A steadfast spirit within me. And then verse 11, I'm going to get to my shout now. It says, Lord, don't cast me away from your presence. I know I'm messed up. I, I know I'm jacked up. I know I, I deal with demons. But, Lord, don't cast me away from your presence. <laughs> but don't just don't cast me away. Don't take your spirit <laughs> away from me. <laughs> Is there anybody in here that realizes <laughs> Though I made my bed in hell, Lord, don't take your spirit away from me. Because if your spirit is with me, whatever I'm in, I'm going to come out of it. Is there anybody in here that you can be your own worship leader? If the band don't play, if the organ don't sound, is there anybody in here that can talk to God and tell God, I need you? right away not another second not another hour but I need you right away is there anybody in here that'll tell the Lord precious Lord take my hand lead me on let me stand is there anybody in here that'll look up to heaven and say Lord I love you I know I don't act like it but I love you I know I don't sound like it, but I love you. And whatever you do, please, Lord, just don't take your spirit from me. Is there anybody in here that understands if you're real with God, God will be real with you. And God will tell you, I knew you was going to mess up. I knew you was going to fall. I knew you was going to get dirty. But before you got dirty, I sent my son to an old rugged cross uh, to die on your behalf uh, that if you just lift your hand up I will uh, pull you out uh, is there anybody in here uh, that understand uh, weeping may endure for a night uh, but joy come in the morning uh, I feel good uh, I feel real good uh, that David can go to God uh, and God said that's a man 
man uh, after my own heart. Uh, Marks, you can go to God. Uh, Anderson, you can go to God. Uh, Selman, you can go to God. Uh, Turner, you can go to God. Uh, if David can go, uh, we all, we all, uh, we all uh, can go to God uh, in spirit. If David can have blood on his hands, a girlfriend, a baby out of wedlock, a liar, if David can go to God and worship God, then all of us, with whatever mess we got, can go to God the same way David did and say, God, Created me a clean heart. I'm not what I want to be, but God, if you created me, if you created me a clean heart, if you renew a right spirit in me, y'all ready for this? If you don't cast me from your presence, and if you let me have your spirit, Verse 13 and 14, he starts talking about what he going to do. Because, see, anytime you're in real worship, God won't let you stay in real worship. God will let you stay long enough to be filled so that you can go out there and tell somebody else in the same predicament, come worship with me. See, you want to stay in the presence of God because you're lazy. When God intended for his presence to be a filling station, to get filled up, to go back out there, to help somebody else come. And while you're sitting there in your seat trying to worship, God said, I quit listening to you 20 years ago. Because I refuse to fill up a tank that's already on full. Go exert some energy and spin down and then come back and watch if I won't fill you back up. And so on Sunday, part of your service how to be asking God to create in you a clean heart. Part of your service ought to be saying, Lord, I, I know I messed up this week, and trust me, I don't care how holy you are. I don't care how perfect you think you are. You messed up some point this week, and your one mess up could have deserved being cast away. But then you got something to praise him about because he didn't cast you away. And that's why you can say, Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. Take me back where I used to be. That old country church in Sepulpa. They used to sing this song that I never understood. The song said, take me back. Take me back to the place where I once found you. And I always thought it meant literally, physically taking me back. But is there anybody in here that realized that when I failed, I needed him to take me back? Take me. Take me back. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. But there's some folk that this morning... You need to come down. You need to come down to ask God, Lord, take me back. Take me back into the fellowship of you. But also take my mind back to when I found you. When I was on so much fire for you, I didn't worry about nobody talking about my dress. Didn't worry about nobody talking about my hair. If, if I didn't get my hair done on Saturday, I still came to church. Take me back to a place that I was so hungry for you that I was stepping over folk. 
to get to you. And take me back to a place when I shared the gospel with everybody. Wasn't worried about rejection. I was just so excited because I knew something about God. Take me back to that energy, Lord. I, I didn't got stale on the way. Take me back to when worship used to make me cry. Take me back to the place when sometimes I was shouting and wasn't no music being played. Take me. Take me back. Take me back to where I first, first saw the light. And as we stand all over the sanctuary, 